what we're going to cover now in this video is how you can leverage API calls in Salesforce to do things like make a token call to get a token to authorize your APIs, but then go through and do things like create accounts and opportunities through the APIs instead of entering that data into the UI. And where this is really useful is, for instance, if you have a use case like the test requires you to update the status of an opportunity, but you don't know what the account and opportunity is, you can quickly create an account and an opportunity to perform those functional UI steps against. Now with the project that you loaded into Virtuo, so if you click in to the goal that's loaded, you'll see there's a journey in here, create account and opportunity via the API. Now what this has built in are some pre-built API calls, and this is for making a token call. So Salesforce APIs are authorized by a token. Then you have to be able to create account via the API. And note this has built in to leverage test data as per the test data sheet that is preloaded with the project. And then once it's created an account, it would go through and create an opportunity. Now, you won't be able to run these straight off. What you need to do is go into Salesforce first to generate what's called your client ID and your client secret. And what you're going to do is put those into the environment. Now, if you know those details straight away, you can just populate them in your client ID and client secret. And then the only other thing you're going to need to know is your Salesforce API endpoint. So I'm going to put mine in here, save that. So you'll need to put that in, otherwise the API calls won't work. So first put the API endpoint in. If you know your client ID and client secret, put them in. Otherwise, what we're going to show you are the steps right now to be able to populate those. So you're going to need some admin settings here and you're going to go into the setup home and then you're going to come into apps and app manager and you want to create a new connected app and you can call this something like authentication. The API name should be authorization. So basically this is used for uh, authorization within the APIs put in your email address just uh, or your admin's email address. Now, the important thing here is once that's set up, we want to come down to the API to enable OAuth settings and check that to open up. And we're going to put in callback URL, the login.salesforce.com slash services slash OAuth2 slash success. And then for this, I'm going to set this as full access full, and we're going to add that. And then we need to make sure we also check enable client credentials flow. There we go. And upon doing that, we can now click to create or save rather and click continue. And then what we end up with is our authorization app, as you see here. And what we want to do in the app manager is on the app we just created, click the little down arrow, click on view. And now what we can get is the client ID and the client secret. And so to do that, we have to manage consumer details. And again, if you've got OTP, you'll be asked to put that in. And basically then you can see, you can get your consumer key and get the consumer secret as well. So with the client ID and client secret populated, you can come in and edit and put those details in for the client ID and client secret. And now your environment details are complete. Note that we are using version 56 here of the APIs. If you want to use a later version, then you can put those in. So just to let you know that where the APIs are actually set up are within the API testing module of Virtuoso. So we've created a token call, which gets details from the environment. So the endpoint, client ID, client secret, and redirect URI. Note Salesforce uses an authorization code, which we've written the steps already for you to generate. We've got a create account using the standard object API for accounts, and then pulls in test data from your test data sheet builds the body, also the authorization and the output, and does the same for the opportunity. Now note, these are just using some standard objects for account and opportunity. So if yours are different, of course, you'll need to remap these or add in additional fields as you like. And you can hopefully use these as just a basis because this is using the standard object API, then you could modify these. You could copy these and create your own uh, APIs off these. Otherwise, if we come into the project dashboard now, back into my first Salesforce goal and go into the APIs, I'm gonna to want to restart the bot just because I've put in new details into the environment. 
So what this is going to do now is it's going to go through and it's going to log in and it's important that you uh, have the login steps because to perform the token call you need to first get an authorization code which requires you to be logged in to Salesforce. So what we've got is a sequence of steps here to make the token call. Note that this is a library checkpoint so you don't have to rewrite this. Uh, you could just come to the library checkpoint and you've already got if you type token you've got the token call as a reusable sequence you can add in. But basically that makes the call to get the authorization code, stores it, passes it into the token call, returns the token, seeing the side effects here, and then that token can be used by the next API call, which is creating an account, which also passes in test data from the test data table to create an account and stores the record ID of that. And then using that same account, we're then creating an opportunity under that account, again, using the token call and test data. And again, we're storing the opportunity ID. So in this case, you can see how instead of having to write all of the details into the screen, we have created an account and opportunity through the API calls, which is very quick. And then we could just perform some steps in the UI to be able to then search for the opportunity. And let's say if the test requires me to update the status, I'm only performing those steps in the UI. So that shows you how you can generate your client ID and client secret in Salesforce if you don't already know it, so long as you have permissions to uh, go through the steps we showed in Salesforce, populate them into the environment, and then use the pre-built APIs to be able to uh, make API calls to pass in data.